See, Elmo's got a problem. Specifically the power cord. You can see it running along the wall here. It actually runs all the way up and out that window. That one. And we're gonna fix that. Um, because the other end of it looks like this over my shoulder. It looks like that. And that, my friends, is a problem. stepped away from the boat for a moment so we can talk about the ins and outs of this entire power cord project, if you will, for Tiamo, and how it affects not just my boat, but yours, or the boats of uh, people that you know. Shore power connections are absolutely mandatory for a lot of boats. They keep the bilge pumps running, if nothing else, so the boats don't sink. Boats always have a leak. It's kind of what they do. <laughs> you would think that all the water stays on the outside, and it really doesn't. Uh, for instance, my boat has uh, packing glands, and those glands are designed to allow water through, but very controlled amount, uh, because the water itself serves as a lubricant. Um, these packing glands are found anywhere a moving shaft goes through the boat hull and into the water, so on the prop or on the rudder. Most boats today, vast majority of them in fact, use what's called an LM30 socket. This is a socket where there's three pins and it, you push the socket together and then you twist it in order to make the connection and lock it into place. Because the LM30 uh, twist or press then twist function, um, which is called the Hubble lock, uh, you, you end up with a situation where the pin of the cord, which is shaped like this, is being pressed into a, uh, a receiver and then it slides into place, right? It rotates into place. So that system only has points of contact, right? It, it pinches together on it. Because of that, you have a very limited amount of area in which the receptacle is actually engaging the pin being pressed into it. This receptacle then has uh, dimples on it so that the pin being pressed into it has a point of engagement. These dimples, when you take this plug apart, and I won't recreate what other people have done on the internet. Yeah, they only engage about a millimeter worth of uh, surface area or um, cross section. And when you do the math, you end up with a little bit more than six millimeters of square area that the receptacle actually engages the pen. Compare this to then a cable being used to provide power to the boat. The, the cable itself being eight gauge or whatever, um, has around 30 something square millimeters of cross section area to carry all the amps that that requires. So we're effectively a fifth of what we need, um, according to what the cable size is, of actual engagement on the pin. Another key thing about boats is there's a lot of water around. And in my case, there's salt water around. And if you get any of that salt water in this connection, you're going to see a process in which that the metal ablates and becomes less and less contact area to the point where you have a cascading problem and the pin will eventually erode away from the electrolysis, if you will, of the, the entire connection 
until you're left with a high resistance, high current situation. And when you put those two things together, you're going to generate heat. And you're going to generate more and more heat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Get the point. I know I started this video on a bit of a uh, scare tactic approach. Um, although, in all fairness, people have lost their lives to fires on boats. And when I first started looking into boating, serious boating, not just a power boat that I took out on a trailer, um, no shore power, very little power necessary. It had a couple lights and a radio. Um, I found a repeating theme of these sockets being a source of concern. And because of a personal fear of fire, um, despite being a blacksmith, <laughs> uh, a fear of fire that I'm not in control of, if you will, um, I immediately started looking for alternatives and I found something called a smart plug. Uh, at the time when I first started researching into it, it had a lot of really neat features and it still does. Um, but due to some backlash from the ABYC, um, certification of, uh, marine electronics and electricians, um, they've taken away one of the key features that I thought was incredible. Uh, we'll get into that. But the smart plug system doesn't use a push and twist uh, mechanism. It just uses a push. And because of the push method, you end up with a situation where the pins can lay against one another and you have much more square, uh, square area for the, those pins to conduct the electricity that they're carrying. So you end up with a situation where the pin comes together and one pin lays against another and then you have a, a crimp that pushes against it to like lock it into place. And because of this, you, you don't have this uh, dimple approach. Um, a lot more square area, you can carry those amps and you don't see as much heat generated because you're not experiencing the same resistances. I find the the resistance uh, of the community uh, against the smart plug to be amusing. Um, we're dealing with a LM30 socket as being the standard, as the as the gold standard go to for boat electricians to install shore power connections on boats. Um, these came out in 1938, and a lot of things have happened since 1938. Um, but the the basic plug was never updated. And there's a slew of problems with them. Uh, they don't seal properly. They can crack. They can. There's any number of things that can go wrong with them, and uh, they're just not, in my opinion, designed for a marine environment. Even plugs that are redesigned using the LM30 standard to involve locking rings and you know washers to keep the, the dust and the the dirt and the water out, um, they still fail. And I challenge you to find me a picture of a failed smart plug that was due to the plug itself and not uh, a bad installation. So this diagram was provided by smart plug and you know take that with a grain of salt because they're touting their own product. But we're looking at the twist type shore power connection versus the smart plug shore power connection. Uh, the smart plug uh, originally came with overheat protection. It had a, th a thermostat built into it that would keep it from overheating and if it did overheat it would break the circuit um, the reason the ABYC came unglued is because when it wasn't as hot anymore it would recreate the circuit <laughs> and uh, they uh, made the argument that um, that could electrocute people and yes it could <laughs> um, however at some point you have to rely on common sense right um, for instance uh, inverters will automatically kick on in some boats and when shore power is lost like a house with an automatically starting generator the inverter will kick on so that the 12 120 volt appliances continue to operate without interruption and so if you're dealing with a situation on a boat where the shore power is not hooked up and you're working on the boat somehow and you accidentally trigger a condition where that inverter can come on and somebody has their hands in a panel they're playing with 120 volts and in the same way that if you're working on a shore power cord and 
somebody plugs it in while you're working on it, you're playing with 120 volts. At some point, personal responsibility comes into play in, in assuring that your boat is locked out and that the electrician or yourself, if you're a DIY guy like myself, can reach in and not electrocute themselves. The fact that they no longer provide the thermal protection without special request is really frustrating. And in fact, I need to go buy a new socket for my boat because I thought it still had it and it turns out they took it out because of the backlash from the ABYC community. Moving forward in the rest of the illustrations on this diagram, uh, the twist type system locks with the pins. Um, now they have the twist lock systems that have an additional ring that's threaded and that will lock it as well but some of the original systems and including the one that was on my boat um, you just press it in and twist it and you're done that's all the more you get um, and personally i haven't been on a lot of boats that have the the new locking ring and it still fails the smart plug instead um, went over the top with locking uh, it's just a push in system and so they needed to make sure it wouldn't fall back out again and so the plug itself has locking mechanism built on into it on either side and it when it goes in it snaps into the socket though that's spring loaded and to get it out you have to squeeze both sides of the plug at the same time and it can come out they went one step further they added a locking mechanism to the lid of the socket itself so that it locks in two places on the plug, not just the one, which I have a video of the installation where I, uh, I forget to mention that there's the second lock. We've already talked about the electrical pins. Um, the, the twist lock system has a curved pin, which just naturally means you can't have as much surface area contact with the, uh, the, dim the dimpled receptacle and the plug. And the smart, the smart plug system uses a flat pin. And because of that, we can we can ensure a much greater amount of contact area. A lot of the smart plug systems um, also use um, a great deal of weatherproofing. If you DIY your own plug together, um, it is not guaranteed to be waterproof, obviously, but the ones you purchase from the factory are. And because of this, we have a lot less water intrusion causing that corrosion or that um, the arcing of the electricity that will ablate the metal away. Uh, so your, your plug is much more robust. That said, don't put it in the ocean. <laughs> it's just, if you get it wet, you got to clean it out. You got to dry it out and get that salt out of there, right? Salt attracts water. Um, so you want to make sure that's clean. Last slide I have for you before we get into the installation on Tiamo shows the heat differential between the two different plug types. And both of these plugs in the article I found this image on uh, had the same amount of amp draw for the same amount of time. And you can see very clearly that the smart plug system is outperforming notably over the standard LM30 connection. Okay, so in the spirit of hard to reach places, the AC for the boat runs through a very awkward place. Um, there's the panel, it's open right now. And I'm laying in the galley uh, on the aftermost bench. I have my flashlight in my hand because I have to squeeze into a very small spot. I'm not a very tiny, very small person to begin with, but as you can see, there's not a room here. Now that we're in here, uh, let's flip that around. The AC power comes in through that black corrugated plastic, runs uh, down underneath, or I'm sorry, down behind all those DC red wires, which I don't know where they're going exactly, the AC lines come off of that and up into that port side most conduit. The green comes out of there and down to the galvanic isolator. I can't actually see what the camera's pointing at, so I hope this takes well. And that way this device here is supposed to protect um, the metal and the water of the boat. And then the other side goes up, and I presume to some sort of AC terminal block there. Now, if we flip our visibility behind us, that corner there is the uh, bulkhead from the uh, cockpit sole, and that's where I'm going to poke a hole through. Let me go look inside. I don't want to 
see from the other end. So it's a turn right there. Because as soon as we open that up, I think I have barrel connectors to just slip and crimp. That's how you get rings. Okay, top! Yeah, you're right. Yeah, a little bit higher maybe. Can you go uh, towards the hull of the boat more? Yeah, you're just inside the tabbing there. You're low of the tabbing on the top. Okay, so that tabbing on the top is probably the step up on the deck, huh? All right, well, that looks good to me. It's going to have to be wider than that, but yeah, it looks great. This is the smart plug, test fitted against the boat. You'll notice that the screws aren't put into the, the base plate, but the system is connected and tested as good. Just wanted to show how this works right quick for people. First active locking mechanism is in the lid itself. The lid comes down and locks against the smart plug. The second active locking system is in these, these squeeze pins here on the side and then it's out. You have an indicator on the plug that lets you know when it has power. The system is protected against moisture intrusion. You can see there's a gasket hiding down inside there. And it's keyed so you can only put it in in one way. When you're not using the plug, simply close the lid and that also seals the plug. When you are using it, plugging it in is straightforward. And you're all set. My cord is set to run over the bowsprit and out through the ball pulpit down along the port side of the boat. When there's lifelines, it'll run on the inside of the lifelines, but between the lifelines and the bulwark. So it's nice and tucked out of way and doesn't serve as a trip hazard while she's in the slip. When underway for a day sail, I rarely take the cord off the boat. I simply spool it up and leave it laying on the deck nice and tidy away from foot traffic. appreciate you guys taking the time to join me as we talk about shore power connections and trying to alleviate the disasters that can come from a poorly installed uh, shore power connection on a boat. Um, I apologize, um, I am a single DIY guy uh, working on my boat and so I can't get a lot of great photos and video content uh, because usually I'm, as you saw, that, you know, <laughs> boat yoga into my own boat trying to make the things connect. Um, so I, I don't have any pictures of where I modified the existing socket to, I'm sorry, to uh, create the socket hole for the, the smart plug to connect to and uh, a couple other key elements like connecting it to the panel and such. Uh, there will be a video on the electrical panel of Tiamo being opened up and the various things that I did inside there to improve the quality of the electrical connections and to ensure that the panel, panel was serviceable via a nice big long service loop and another, another uh, couple upgrades that I did to make sure that that was good to go. I appreciate you guys joining me for this adventure and for this DIY episode on shore power connections. I hope that you subscribe. I hope that you like. I hope that you share this with your friends and family and specifically other boater types so that they, that they too can make an informed decision as to what I feel is a necessary upgrade to a boat.